the undead oh. is a there is no end. A rich, rich area. Why is it so rich? I I was never as enchanted by the undead mm -hmm. as so many other people have. That's been. right. And nowadays, uh, just to sort of contextualize your your question, zombies and undead things are indeed the monster du jour, right? On our, right. whether it's the walking dead from, from past years, now there's the last of us. Mm -hmm. uh, um, even, zombified by yeah, fungus. Zombified by fungus 28 days, 28 years later, and that yeah. kind of thing. Whether the cause is a virus or That's a right. fungus or whatever. That's right. Things that are not alive fascinate us simply because we're not dead, right? Think about this. Things that are not alive fascinate us because we are alive. And we don't understand them. We have no idea, uh, unless you're religious and you have a strong belief. That's right. Ethic in that. That's right. We have no idea what happens after death. That's right. So nothing can be spookier. That's right. And and even those belief systems cannot be confirmed in any sort of experimental of course, strategy. Right, 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 right. People have tried, as you know. They're mm -hmm. uh, even expressed in uh, fiction, like Dan Brown's novel *Angels and Demons*. There supposedly was an experiment where they had somebody who was about to die and weighed him, and then he died, and they weighed him again, and it was a little lighter. You know, some sort of physical thing. They even like tried. A soul. What right went? And you got to give him credit for doing the experiment. You got to try. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So if everyone thinks you have a soul, and there's science that can test things, mm -hmm. why not test your soul? Mm -hmm. So right after Ronchin, Wilhelm Ronchin uh, X discovered X-rays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. X-rays can see through your body. No one else ever saw through your body. Right. Now X-rays. So they get somebody dying on the bench and they waited for him to die to see if they saw something leaving his body with the X. And they didn't. They did not. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So there have been continuous experiments to try to understand what it is that makes something alive versus not alive, right? Because a living person and a dead person, uh, seconds apart, for example, right? Um, one moment they're talking they're breathing they're whatever they're holding your hand next moment they're not and we can't get into their brain to figure out how that works an important feature of the walking dead yes. it, in my judgment yes. was if you were dead for a long time so your body mm -hmm. was putrefied you're yes. not going to come back to life that's right so they recognized that you your organs you and have everything to be mostly dead most <laughs> <laughs> you, you have to be not so dead that your organs would not be harvestable. That's right. By by the card that you signed. That's right. On your driving license. Right. Right. right? And so, and that's where the transition comes be mm -hmm. when you become a zombie. And and one another thing about The Walking Dead was that everybody was infected, whether they were dead or alive. The moment you died, you became a zombie. So, what's the point of even trying to stay alive? when you know you're going to become a zombie anyway. But that's sort of the existential question of what makes a monster and what makes a human, right? Uh, if you've died, you automatically become a monster or do you become inanimate? Are you different from a rock or a stake? Did you or, see the, yeah. the Key and Peele skit with the, the zombies or taking over the suburban town? No. And it's just like a Saturday afternoon, people are barbecuing. Yes. And there's, there's a black family over on the side. Okay. And the zombies... Like avoid the black people. <laughs> These are racist zombies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, you can do something like what happened in World War Z, where the author said, "We actually don't know why these zombies violate the laws of physics so completely, and yet they do." I didn't like World War Z because the zombies ran. You can't. Oh yeah. You can't. If you were a zombie, <laughs> come on. You got to drag a foot. Drag something. Well, you don't be chasing me down the in, street in the movie. They ran, and they were very fast. In the book, they were actually quite slow. You read the book? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Battle of Yonkers, did you, did you not see that? No. Oh, oh, incredible story. Without ruining uh, or spoiling the story for everybody, basically, the army wants to make a big show of force to stop these zombies, and so they bring the soldiers over, and they like, have all this firepower. Turns out that they're routed by the zombies because... The army has not thought through how to stop them. And so again, humans in our hubris thinking that we can control a force of nature when in fact nature comes back and tells us, uh, -uh it's not going to happen. So one feature of sci-fi, yeah. which is I think its finest feature when well done, is it's taking place in another place and yeah, there are aliens and there's rockets and it's in the future, but there's some 
story element yes. that's a reflection of the time in which you live. Absolutely. So that there's 100%. a lesson in there. Yes. Either a moral lesson or a philosophical lesson. Yes. So in the zombie storytelling, the zombie genre, I'm almost fatigued wondering, is there more <laughs> lessons that they can teach him? What lesson was there to start with? Let's use The Last of Us. Okay, mm -hmm. which was built originally as a video game, but now has been turned into a very successful so many television series. Have. That's right. Remind me to tell you about Monster Hunter. Okay, that is a great uh, game franchise, but that's in a moment. Right now, we would say that the reason that The Last of Us happens and humans are threatened, global warming is the culprit in The Last of Us. I did right? not remember that yes. fact. Um, Mushrooms or, or fungi, okay, a particular group of fungi, uh, cordyceps, is uh, there are hundreds of species of this, this particular fungus. Let me remind people, fungus is an entire branch yeah. in the tree of life. It's a king kingdom. Right. It's a kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. animal kingdom. When I grew up, there were only two kingdoms. That's right, animal yeah. and plant. And plant. The fungus is its own kingdom. Yes. That's how badass we, they are. We now understand that's the case, right? Yes. But see, uh, fungi, they can't survive parasitically in humans because we are warm-blooded. We have a higher body temperature than most fungi can tolerate. So fungal uh, parasitism or uh, infection happens all the time in the cold-blooded world, okay? Uh, ants, uh, wasps, they are parasitized by fungus all the time. There's a famous zombie ant fungus right. that causes the ants to go up and then the fruiting bodies grow out of their antennae, and then they pop, and then the fungi continue to uh, reproduce. That is nasty. It is nasty <laughs> stuff, but it is actually, we believe. I'm gonna say that better. That's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's natural, right? Mm -hmm. And we consider that to be very scary because that doesn't happen to humans. When we get diseases, it's from viruses and bacteria most of the time. Not right? from fungus. But not from fungus. We but, get skin to skin fungus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We get little things. Yeah. But what happens in the Last of Us mythology is that because of global warming, uh, funguses or fungi start to evolve to be able to live in warmer temperatures. And eventually one of those parasitic um, fungi, the cordyceps, whatever, whatever. Jump species. Right? Jump is. species. And is able to live in humans even though our body temperatures are 98 Not just on the skin. That's right. Where it's not inside. Body temperature. And so we basically become parasitized by this fungus. And the fungus is not evil. The fungus is just a fungus, right? There are fungus. Uh, it's, it's trying a, to make more fungi. It's a fungus among us. <laughs> there is mm -hmm. nothing of... Uh, evil stuff, but what happens when humans are now threatened as a species by the fungus, you find out we humans do monstrous things like kill and oppress and push away and isolate and so forth because we are afraid of what we have created from the global warming and from the, uh, the natural reaction of nature, fungus evolving to, cre uh, to thrive in what we create. For whom the bell tolls, <laughs> it the tolls monster for bell. That's right. <laughs> the well, monster bell tolls for us. Uh, Stop ringing that monster bell. <laughs> <laughs> We've told you so many times. I, I don't even know why we have a monster bell, to be honest. But the fact that just stop it. <laughs> stop for, monster. Look. You would give zombie storytelling mm -hmm. high grades for yes. for continuing this tradition of science fiction to hold up a mirror Absolutely. to who and what we are. Absolutely. Uh, Nowadays, right, we can't see these things, these biological monsters. They're microscopic, Ooh. right? Unlike the macroscopic ones. smaller than ones we that, are rather right. than bigger. So they sneak in and they are as unknown and as unknowable as ghosts and spirits and so forth, right? So it's the frightening part of it is that what we don't understand and what we don't know. This has been true for all monsters throughout all of history. Okay, what about uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Yes! That was interesting because... The monster was just another a spore, a, mm -hmm. but it was a complete other human being. They did, they didn't look weird. They didn't look scary. That's right. But they were they not had been co opted co by interstellar or non human spores. So instead of a fungus that had evolved from our Earth, they had dropped in from somewhere in space. From space, and but you would come out of a pod. Mm -hmm. Some have said those are some of the most terrifying scenes absolutely ever yes because we have the closeness to humans and recognizable things 
but mm-hmm. just a little bit off, and we can imagine ourselves in that predicament. That's where it is. Well, that also mm-hmm. kind of reminds me a bit of the, the Uncanny Valley and that, that effect with humans. If you, certain animations or certain models of humans or, or uh, like realistic human uh, Why robots, are we afraid of dolls? They make Why us- Why are we afraid of clowns? Something that looks- <laughs> Yeah, and it, oh, is, okay. it is that thing of something that, if it's- a long way from human. If it's very cartoony, we're fine with it. That's right. If it's completely human, fine. But if it's just a little bit off, then that we find that uneasy. Our if something, dream. if an animation of a human is just a bit too real, but not perfectly real, that's. You ah, know what I was told? Us. I haven't yes. verified this, but I was told this that in the humans that are portrayed in Finding Nemo are a little bit sort of clunky. Yes. Mm-hmm. But they did that on purpose because if they were too real, it would just be weird. And we wouldn't be able to sympathize you with c- the fish. You could. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because that's the goal. That's right. And so the irony is, again, who are the monsters in Finding Nemo? Not the fish, not the shark, the humans. One of the most, I'd say, top five famous episodes of the Twilight Zone has yes. the word monsters in it. So this episode, I forgot ex- the exact name, the monsters are due on Maple Street? Yes. I think that was it. That's right. In one of the homes, the lights start flashing. Ah. Their car automatically turns on. And the neighbors wonder, what's wrong with the Joneses over mm-hmm. there? Why are they, why is their house doing this? And, you know, are they, you know, they're, they're monsters. Or they're, they, they, <laughs> they start to fear them because things are happening to yes. them. But yes. We're your neighbors. We're your this. And then, and then it doesn't happen. It goes to another home and weird things happening. The garage door opens and closes. And then they start turning on each other. Yes. And this continues, and oh my gosh. And then th- it ends, I have to do it because it's the it show's 60 years old, I'm allowed to give Flashes a Flashes out to the aliens. It comes out to the aliens. Mm-hmm. And the two aliens observing Elm Street. And they said, does this happen every place we do these experiments? They said, yes, the humans will turn on themselves just <laughs> by the, he says, so they will be easy to conquer. Yes. <laughs> we, we don't have to. A hundred percent. Because we are the monsters. That's right. That's right. Period. <laughs>